Georgia's next great quarterback just went into the transfer portal. You are locked on college football, your daily podcast on all things college football, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Locked On College Football. I'm your host, Spencer McLaughlin. Thank you so much for making this your first listen or your first view every day. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day, and your daily source to stay up to date with the biggest stories in the greatest sport on planet Earth. Realignment, coaching carousel, and of course, that thing called the transfer portal. We've always got you covered. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends at Monopoly Go. I have a competitive side, I admit it, and it is a big fan of Monopoly Go. The mobile hit twist on classic Monopoly. Join your friends, download Monopoly Go now free on the App Store or Google Play. We'll check in in Knoxville with the Tennessee Vols and the Florida Gators. And let's start with a little more SEC talk because why not? The best games from the best conference, the SEC on CBS, which doesn't exist anymore. But the transfer portal does, and Jaden Rashada is in it. So Rashada has already had one of the wildest college football careers and it hasn't even started yet. What what Spencer what do you what could you possibly be talking about? For those who are unaware of this kid's journey, here's a little timeline. Coming out of high school, he's a highly sought after four-star recruit. His composite grade on 24-7 sports was in the 95-96 range. He was originally committed verbally to the Miami Hurricanes. He then flipped to the Florida Gators. He got a big NIL offer reportedly, and then apparently, maybe, possibly, we think, mm, didn't go through, didn't work out. He goes and gets released from his national letter of intent, which is not an easy thing to do. He had signed on signing day to be a Florida Gator, did not become a Florida Gator, and then he went to Arizona State with Kenny Dillingham this past year. He unfortunately had some injuries, didn't play a whole lot. He showed glimpses, but never got the opportunity to go on full display, and he can be the next great Georgia quarterback, and reports on 24-7 sports uh, to guys like Matt Zenitz are that Georgia is a team to watch for Jaden Rashado, who's a native, by the way, of Pittsburgh, California, to Coral Gables, to Gainesville, to Tempe, to Athens, maybe, possibly, we'll find out. But this guy's talent is immense. The size, the arm, I've seen him throw live before. He's got plenty of zip. He could certainly bulk up a little bit. He's he's a little thin, but guess what? Georgia doesn't need him to play right now. Georgia has got no need. This is a match made in heaven because Jaden Rashada needs two things. Number one, he needs somebody to learn from. And at Arizona State, he didn't have that because there was a lot of quarterback turnover. There were injuries. It was all just kind of a mess. And Kenny Dillingham, who I think can do a really good job at Arizona State, I genuinely believe that. This is certainly a loss for the Devils because I don't know where they go at quarterback from here. And as they look to rebuild in the Big 12, it's certainly doable, but it's going to be a long road for Kenny Dillingham down there in Tempe. But Rashada is a guy who is immensely talented, who's got several years of eligibility left. I'm pretty sure he would have taken a red shirt this past year because he didn't hardly play at all for ASU. So he needs somewhere where he can learn from a veteran quarterback because he didn't have that opportunity in its fullest or to the best extent with the Sun Devils. And he needs somewhere where he doesn't have a lot of expectations. And thirdly, he needs somewhere where he's got stability because so far, everything about this kid's life as a college football player has been nothing but hectic chaos fueled by NIL and the portal and media discussions. I I had the opportunity when he was first getting recruited out of high school to, to interview him and it was late in the recruiting process and you know there were a bunch of us there asking him questions about where he was going to go and he was considering a, a number of different spots and the the kid at that time this is before Miami Florida ASU and now to the portal again he just looked fatigued he looked over it and I, I have to imagine that he wants to go somewhere where he can just 
settle in, where he can just play quarterback. And look at everything that took place at ASU. You had a new coaching staff come in. You had a bowl ban. They've got, you know, they've had beef with their athletic director, Ray Anderson, who they were finally able to get rid of. It is not the best athletic department, unfortunately, to be a part of. It can be, but it is certainly not right now. Georgia makes a lot of sense. Because if he can go and sit behind Carson Beck, who I and many others think is one of the best quarterbacks in all of college football, who will be off to the NFL, who's played in college football, and he can go learn the Mike Bobo offensive system and be alongside Kirby Smart and just hold a clipboard this year. Dante Moore is a guy who was also in the 2023 class and went to UCLA after he was at Oregon. Now he's back at Oregon. And you know why he chose to go to the Ducks? Because he's going to go and sit and learn for a year. And and we live very much in college football in a microwave sort of world. Some guys need a crockpot approach. You just have to let it let it go low and slow. You can't rush these sorts of things. And I think that Rashada has been, you know, with all these headlines and everything and discussion about him and the NIL situation at Florida, I think he's an 18, 19 year old kid drinking out of a fire hose right now as far as the media go, and it's been that way for several years, I think he's got to be tired of it. So he can go to Georgia and he won't be a storyline anymore. He, he won't be a major talking point unless you're listening to Locked On Georgia Bulldogs, of course, in which case, yeah, they'll talk about what you know he could maybe show in, uh, in, in spring practice or, or any sort of environment like that. But I think he needs to go somewhere where he can be not just on the back burner, but out of sight, out of mind, and just get back to football. This guy can make special throws. He's got high-level arm talent, clean release. He's a good athlete as well. He's got all the tools, but what he needs to be at his best is the right environment. And there's no program that is more capable. Certainly there'd be others, but I don't see a program that is as steady, consistent, and high caliber as Georgia right now. I think anybody would tell you it's the best program in all of college football. That, that's what Kirby Smart is, is, is building over there, or has built, I should say. Two national championships and then a 13-win season. That's what his last three years look like. Jaden Rashada goes to be a Bulldog this year. He's not in the headlines. All he has to do is figure out, how do I get better? What do I need to do in the weight room? How am I doing in the classroom? What am I you know, needing to pick up as, as a quarterback in this system? Hey, Carson, how do you do this? How do you approach that? That's what he needs. That's what he needs. And that's why if Jaden Rashada goes to Georgia, his talent can be maximized. That's not to say the Bulldogs are the only school that could possibly maximize him. But when I saw that the interest was there, my first thought was, oh my gosh, it's perfect. It's it's absolutely perfect. It's got everything that he needs to succeed. And I hope he can go find that because look, he, he's been a poster child for you know, a lot of people who don't care for NIL and the portal and it's everything that's wrong and people are too self-interested. I hear a lot of those arguments, but every time Jaden Rashada's name comes up in the, in the news, that's, that's the way the cycle goes. And that's the way I get it. I, I, I get it. I work in this space. Obviously I understand it, but I think a kid like that deserves to have the opportunity to be a backup quarterback, to learn, to just go work on yourself and find a situation that can just calm everything down and let you play some gosh darn football. This could be a big, big move for Georgia. And if they get the most out of him, their transition from Carson Beck on to the next guy, if it's Jaden Rashada, it could be pretty darn seamless. Will Tennessee's transition be seamless after they had a big departure in the transfer portal? That's coming up next. So I have a competitive side, at least I have been told. And guess what? My competitive side is a big fan of Monopoly Go. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's been downloaded over 150 million times. I look forward to the day when I can say this show has been downloaded and viewed 150 million times. We'll get there one at a time. But Monopoly Go is a great twist on Monopoly where you play on not one, but hundreds of Monopoly boards in crazy locations, building up amazing cities that bring you big money. The best part 
is messing with your friends. You can charge them rent on iconic properties just like Classic Monopoly, but you can also heist their vaults of riches for yourself. But it's not just the competitive side of, of you that'll love it. You can team up with friends and people all around the world in time tournaments to earn huge rewards. So get in the game and join your friends. Download Monopoly Go now free on the App Store or Google Play. This episode also brought to you by our friends at eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, mine's sitting in the garage, I call it the Red Rocket, it is... A work of art. You'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit, only available to U.S. customers. Tennessee linebacker Elijah Herring officially in the transfer portal. He'd announced he was going to be in, but then he wasn't officially in the portal, but now he is there. That and more coming up right here with Eric Kane of Locked On Vols. How big of a loss is this for Tennessee? You know, he was their leading tackler last year. So you look on paper, you're looking from afar, it's like, oh man, huge loss for Tennessee, leading tackler. And I'm not trying to minimize that. I mean, I like Elijah Herring. I think he's a bright young player. Um, but he's got his limitations for sure. He is a in-the-box run player, downhill guy. Um, screens Big Ten, right? I mean, it, yeah. it, it feels <laughs> yes, it like a, a Big Ten player. Um, but, you know, when he's outside of the box, and, you know, that's kind of the way the game, a lot of areas are going, you know, in the SEC, spread things out, multiple receivers. He certainly, you know, has a long way to go in terms of improvement. Um, but, again, he, he's he's got a lot of intangibles. He was forced into a starting role when Keenan Peely went out this past year. Very prematurely, but Tennessee didn't have an option. Um, but he got better and better as the, as the year went on. So Tennessee didn't want to lose him per se, but you do have Keenan Peely, Arian Carter, Jeremiah T. Lander, Edwin Spillman. I mean, you've got, you got a lot of linebackers ready to roll, so it's not a, an absolutely devastating loss, if that makes sense. He has a younger brother, um, Caleb Herring, who's a, who's a Leo, who's an edge player, and they're very close. So honestly, with this one, he announced on Monday that he was going to the portal. He didn't officially get into the portal until Thursday. If he were to take his name out of the portal, wouldn't shock me at all with this one. Because, again, little brother's still on campus, Caleb Herring. And at this time, he's not going anywhere. Yeah, and he's someone who can can be a plug-and-play starter. And, and the production is proven at Tennessee. That can be you know, what, what a lot of teams are really seeking in the transfer portals. Hey, we want someone who comes in, fills a need right now, can start right away. We'll pick up a defensive system pretty quickly. He's reportedly had contact with Colorado, and that's no surprise because Deion Sanders and the transfer portal go together like peanut butter and jelly. They're just, they're always together, it seems, and they're very rarely seen as a, a being apart there. Demoy Kennedy went into the transfer portal. He was a former five star once at Alabama. He went to Colorado. It didn't work out there. So he's in the portal. That's a linebacker that's available. But, you know, if Herring were to wind up with the Buffs, I'd have to think that's a guy who steps in and starts right away, and that fit makes a lot of sense given that Kennedy just left Colorado. Yeah, and I mean, Elijah Herring, again, he's bright, he's smart, he's hungry. Um, I think it it would fit in more with that play play style in in the conference. Um, Would make a whole lot of sense. And, um, again, he's a guy that, I mean, it's not like he's bad. He's very productive. He had 80 tackles in in 13 games last year, Um, played both Mike and Will. Again, has experience playing outside the box a little bit. His his role as a freshman uh, last year <clears throat> was coming in, coming off the edge there in, in pass rushing situations. So he's got a little bit well-rounded part of his game, if you will. Um, but I think if he were to visit, like, and commit to Colorado, would make a whole lot of sense. And I think he would be an immediate impact player for uh, for, for, for Dion. Yeah, when you say run-stuffing linebacker, that screams Big Ten, especially oh, yeah. when you look at the lineup of quarterbacks in the Big Ten this year. It, it's not a very impressive list i mean we had jay stevens of locked on buckeyes on the show recently talking about how will howard might not even be the starter at at ohio state which has been an assumption for a long time but that that doesn't look to be you know set in stone you've got dylan gabriel at oregon you've got drew aller at at penn state 
those are the only you know high end or above average known commodities you've got over there so certainly that that could be a fit for elijah herring but take a look at the big picture for tennessee in the transfer portal right now they've been pretty quiet in knoxville both on the additions front and on the departures front what does that mean for for tennessee football at the moment yeah i mean i think it's a good thing um you know elijah herring really to this point again to this point has been the only one that has announced attentions and entering the transfer portal or anything like that um, I, I think that there are some guys that we kind of expected that might look around and, and maybe go. But remember, at this point, until it's petitioned in court, and they, they change that as well, in the SEC, in this window, if you, if you enter the portal, you can't go to another SEC school. So you're kind of limited a little bit, right? Um, but I think it also shows that, hey, these guys like being on this team. These guys like being a part of this locker room and this culture with Josh Heupel, the staff that, uh, that they've created, and kind of know that you know Tennessee's kind of on the brink right now. Um, you're kind of in that conversation of, hey, with 12-team playoffs, man, you can you can push and have a chance to go win a national title. And you kind of go on a run here and you win a couple of games. Maybe you can be in Atlanta and playing for an SEC championship and um, the belief around quarterback Nico Iamaliava. So I think it's all that, that, that kind of stuff, and I think it's a good thing because I think this roster is pretty good. But I will say this, um, you're one twisted ankle away at running back from being in a, a real issue here. You got Dylan Sampson, who's your starter. He's good. Cam Selden, your backup, is you know out with an injury, and he might be out until about midway through September. We don't know. After that, you have a whole lot of in inexperience and a whole lot of unknowns. And so going and getting a running back in the transfer portal, and they're evaluating that right now, would make a whole lot of sense. However, going and paying $400,000, $500,000 for a third-string running back makes no sense. So if they are going to take a guy, I think it would be a running back, but it would have to make a whole lot of sense, multi-year and – you, you can't rock the boat. I mean, I don't know what Dylan Sampson's making in name, image, and likeness, but I would imagine you can't go out and, you know, get this guy and pay him more to come and play behind him. You know what I'm saying? It's it's the new era of college athletics that you got to kind of be aware of. Well, and it's a, it's a complicated spot to be in when you're trying to fill a reserve role because typically guys go into the portal because they want to seek more playing time, yeah. right? And so... <clears throat> You know, to use an example that, that I'm familiar with, Jay Harris transferred to Oregon and could be, you know, the th is the third or fourth string running back going into this year. He transferred from Division II Northwest Missouri State. It's pretty rare that you can find a transfer third string running back who'd be willing to come in and, you know, have that sort of role, which is going to be limited because typically a guy is leaving because he is a third string elsewhere or a fourth string and he's further down the depth chart. And you know, going to, to spend NIL dollars for someone that could fill in if an injury takes place. It, it might not feel like an efficient use of dollars for, for the collective and whatnot. So I, I think that's kind of a tricky spot to be in. You talked about the depth chart there for, for Tennessee and kind of how that, that could make sense. A, a name that comes to mind is Colorado running back Alton McCaskill, you know, a guy who might have been a top two at, at, at Colorado had he stayed, but he goes into the portal instead, hasn't played a lot the last couple of years. But but other than that, every running back I see going in the portal, I think is probably going to go somewhere with the intention of being at worst the number two back. Yeah, and I mean, Tennessee's got Nico at quarterback. And, you know, last year they had Joe Milton at quarterback and Nico. And then, um, you know, th those were really the only two scholarship quarterbacks on roster. This year you got three scholarship quarterbacks, but – you know, the fans have been saying, well, go just go get a, a, a body out of the portal, right? Just go get a quarterback out of the portal to to make sure if Nico gets hurt that Tennessee's going to be okay as, you know, Jake Marklinger, you know, comes along as a true freshman. But to your point where you're just saying, it's like, hey, how many quarterbacks want to say, oh, yeah, I'll come. I'll come to Knoxville and I'll sit behind Nico Yamaliyab and I won't play at all, but I'll come. Sign me up. It's not very appealing, right? I mean, it's not – there's not a lot of guys in the transfer portal that want to do that. So, again, I think the transfer portal is great in so many different ways. Like you can help your roster – Guys can go and get new opportunities and all that. But also, it's just not as easy as, oh, that guy hit the portal. Let's go grab him and throw him to my roster on, on Madden or NCAA. It, it just doesn't work like that a lot of times. So I'm, I think we're kind of going through that in the running back situation now. Like, sure, Tennessee needs a running back. I agree. Will it get one from this portal window? I, I don't know because there's just, again, so many different factors. Yeah, do you like where Tennessee's roster is at with the lack of portal moves here? Like, is there any other position that you look at? You know, let's say Elijah Herring does end up leaving uh, the Vols for 2024. Is there any position group where you say, okay, maybe maybe a transfer or starting caliber player would be better at, at this particular spot? Or do you feel like the Vols are set with, you know, a top four or five roster in the SEC? 
I mean, you can always improve. Don't get me wrong. You can always get better. But, I mean, I like this roster. I mean, Tennessee completely started over in the secondary. All five of your starters in the secondary last year have either graduated out of eligibility or transferred. So you're starting from fresh, and, and you went out and got your mom McCoy, who I know you're very familiar with at cornerback, and uh, Jacoby Thomas from, from MTSU coming up, and um, Jalen McMurray from Temple. And, you know, you added those guys to the mix. You brought up some young guys, and – and sure, I'll like may, maybe a defensive back if one's available. Um, but, you know, as far as linebackers, I like the option. Def- Tennessee's defensive line, you've got probably the deepest defensive line in the nation. So you're good there. Offensive line, you got to figure out who's going to be your left guard. But there were so many guys who were injured this, this spring that you never really got to look at that true competition. So um, if one's available and has multiple years and makes sense, sure, go get them. But Outside of that, you're pretty you're pretty good at, at guard and some of the young guys that got a lot of work this year. Um, quarterback, you're good, and of course that brings us back to a wide receiver. You're great, and brings us back to running back. So, um, yeah, I mean, I I think I like this roster. I do. I think this is a roster that is not perfect. It's got some limitations for sure, but again, it's got the makings of being a really solid football team. Whereas the rosters that have been here for Josh Heupel when when he took over a couple years ago. I mean, you were kind of in survival mode. You're not in survival mode anymore. You're in attack mode and like, hey, let's go get this dub mode and let's go be one of the best teams in the SEC. That's that's kind of where your roster is right now. So the lack of movement so far, not a surprise um, because you don't have to go and just take a guy to take a guy like you had to in years past. The latest in Knoxville, Eric Kane, Locked On Balls on YouTube and wherever you get your podcast. Eric, thanks for stopping by. Hey, thanks so much. What does Florida need to accomplish right now? That's coming up next. Before we get to Florida, this episode is brought to you by Game Time, now an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch, not up. With killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying Major League Baseball tickets. You can save up to 60%, 60% buying last minute for sports, concerts, comedy, theater, etc. Save even more with exclusive in-app deals on select seats ahead of the game or event. Wherever you want to go, whatever you're looking to attend, Game Time has got you covered. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-C-O-L-L-E-G-E. That's Locked On College for $20 off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. What does Florida need to accomplish in the transfer portal right now? Well, they're after Penn State transfer wideout Keandre Lambert-Smith. Brandon Olson, Locked On Gators, joining me here on, on the show how good of a chance do the Gators have of landing the former Nittany Lion? If he is truly looking for what he said he's looking for, which is an offense where he can be featured and, and play a lot and an experienced starting quarterback, I feel like Florida should realistically have a pretty good chance of landing him. I, I Obviously there's NIL is going to be a thing as it always is in 2024, but If you're looking for an offense where playing time's available at wide receiver and they're looking for a top option with Eugene Wilson III, Florida has that. And there are very few quarterbacks, if any, right now in college football that have more experience than Graham Mertz. Yeah, he is one of the most experienced guys. You know, I think he's solid. We've talked about him here on the show before. I don't think he's the reason you win games, but he can certainly be a reason you don't lose games. And that's that. That's something. That's something. Uh, Florida's brutal schedule, though. You can use all the help that, that you could get. Do you think that Keandre Lambert Smith comes into Florida if, if he were to transfer there? Is he the number one wideout, or is he just one of the top options? I think he'd be one A, one B with Trey Wilson. Uh, Trey Wilson is just someone that they're going to give the football to a lot, and in, I mean he earned that last year. He had an average depth of target of like three of uh, three yards, but. He was averaging like 11 yards per catch. Uh, He creates a lot after the catch. They're going to continue to give him the ball. If the spring game was any indicator, they are going to force feed him the football. But outside of him, there is no proven starter at any level of that receiver room. Uh, So I I would imagine that Keandre Lambert-Smith would immediately be 1A, 1B, uh, and probably be used as a more complete receiver, whereas Trey Wilson does some of the gadgety stuff. Does it feel like this is 
a need to get for Florida, or is it, you know, we'd we'd like to have him. He can help the offense. Here's the role. We can give you what you want. But, you know, if we don't get him, uh, it's no biggie. Like, is wide receiver what you would describe as a position of need for Florida in this spring transfer window? I think that the coaching staff feels like they need to bring in a receiver that can start and contribute immediately. My opinion is that I think you need to add some experience to the room, but I'm not too hung up on it being an immediate starter or just a veteran depth piece that rotates in every now and then. But I do think the coaching staff feels like they need to add a starter right now. What else is Florida looking at in the transfer portal? They've had a, a fairly solid cycle, but you know, as they enter the, the spring window, which is of course open until April 30th, which is when players can enter the portal, they can come out of the portal anytime that, that they please. What other needs is Florida looking at right now? The interior of the offensive line is definitely a position that they're looking at. Tried moving Damian George from right tackle to right guard. He had um, a rough spring camp, we'll say. Uh, spring game wasn't awful, but... That sounded like you're trying to be nice. I am. I am trying to be nice. I don't like to be mean, but it's pack it in, big dog. Um, so I, I do think that they're going to be looking at guard there because besides him, they just have a bunch of freshmen, whether redshirt or true there. And that's not a position that you want to be in with an offensive line that last year was just straight up terrible. Uh, you don't want to have back-to-back years with a straight up terrible offensive line. So offensive line is going to be a spot. I wouldn't be shocked if they went for another depth piece on the interior of the defensive line either. But I think for the most part, they're pretty comfortable with the roster that they've built so far. They, they've been you know, a team that is trying to regain what they once were. And, and Billy Napier hasn't brought them to that forefront just yet. Are there any moves, are there any names out there that you feel like can just give them the sort of season that, that they're looking for? The win total is five and a half, but if you gave them a Big 12 schedule or an ACC schedule, that win total is probably seven and a half, maybe, maybe even eight and a half, but pro- probably seven and a half would, would be the number there, which is a pretty sizable gap. Are there any of those impact moves that could kind of change the tone and tenor that Florida has been tied to? I, I don't think so, honestly. At this point, I, I think that, They've got a roster that you're only going to improve so much with what's available in the transfer portal right now. Maybe adding a Keandre Lambert Smith or Justice Ross Simmons or or someone from the uh, at, at the receiver room that'll help if you, the coaching staff does not feel like they have starter quality guys throughout. But for the most part, you've built this roster. You had young recruiting classes that were strong. And now it's just about actually putting together the product on the field. You've pretty much had a complete turnover of your coaching staff since you got hired. The only people remaining, Mike Peterson as the edge coach, Rob Sale as offensive line coach, Jabbar Jaluk as running back coach, and every other position coach has changed since Billy Napier got hired. So this is something that you've had the opportunities to change things on, on the coaching staff. We complained about the coaching staff a lot last year. Now it's time to put up or shut up. You've had your time to build the roster, get some results. You, you mentioned Justice Ross Simmons, who's a transfer from Colorado State, honorable mention in in the Mountain West last year with the Rams, a guy who once upon a time played tight end uh, in, in his career whilst at Air Force, big body guy, six foot three, over 200 pounds. Would you, as a Florida guy, want Keandre Lambert Smith and Justice Ross Simmons, or is it, hey, KLS is the primary pursuit. That's the number one target right there because of the level that he's played at previously. And Justice Ross Simmons is, you know, maybe like a consolation pursuit. Or is this offense in a state where you need to add both of those guys if you can? The rumor is that they want to add two receivers in in this portal. So if you can add both of them, that'd be ideal. Uh, they do have kind of a leg up with Colorado State's receiver, Justice Ross Simmons, I'd want to say, because in the winter portal window, they also brought in Clay Millen, Colorado State quarterback, uh, that was starting and then got hurt and then lost the job at that point. He transferred in during the winter window. Uh, Justice Ross Simmons has said that he wants to play with Clay Millen again, that he's considering taking a visit to Florida. I feel like that one, if you're Florida, is a bit of a, a bit of a slam dunk, and, and you should be able to secure him. And then if you can add Keandre Lambert-Smith, that gives you both a, a starter that you added immediately and a guy that you can just rotate in and be a contributor coming off the bench. What would these receivers mean for Graham Mertz in 2024? How much could he be helped if, if they were to bring in at least one or, or maybe both of these guys? 
I think a ton. I think the offense last year, the main thing that they lacked as far as pass catchers were players who could separate consistently. Uh, Khalil Jackson, number 22, is a, a, a circus catch specialist. And it's great that you can make catches over defenders at will. That's a really fun thing to do. It's more fun if you don't have to do that because you can just create natural separation. And I think that Florida really lacked that. They have speed, but still guys that don't separate from their corner. So I think that adding a receiver that can separate specifically over the middle of the field, you lost Ricky Pearsall. I think Graham Mertz would very much like having another option that he can actually trust in the passing game. With Trevor Etienne no longer in the fold uh, at running back, is that a position that Florida could look at in the transfer portal, or are they they pretty set in the backfield? I, I'd be shocked if they did, uh, especially after the performance from the spring game, which I know don't put too much weight in the spring game. Uh, but their true freshman backs looked really good. I, I think that Trayon Webb has taken a step forward. Montreal Johnson looks like he's running like healthy Montreal Johnson again. Cam Carroll's coming back from injury. Running back room looks, looks pretty solid uh, at this point in the game. I don't think that it's something that they're going to be looking to upgrade in the portal. You know, I hear that that statement a lot. Don't put too much into spring games. Well, don't put nothing into the spring game because it's not a game, but it's an organized team activity, the likes of which you have at practice all the time. And you know what goes into putting together a depth chart or understanding who's going to start is those practice environments. So I... I don't mean to harp on you at all, Brandon, but, and I don't even think you were making the point. I just think that that's a notion that I hear all the time. Well, you know, it's just a spring game. Like I've seen stuff over the years go from spring game to fall camp to the field in the fall in a pretty natural progression. So I definitely wouldn't take uh, nothing away from it, but that's the latest over in Gainesville. Brandon Olson, Locked On Gators, joining me here on Locked On College Football. Brandon, thanks for coming by. Thank you. Appreciate everyone listening. I'll see you next time. Have a great weekend. And until then, hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.